Good evening, everyone. Uh, Nick Cass here with our weekly Faith and Friends Live. Um, yeah, this week we're going to be looking at John chapter 11. Uh, before we get into that, just a few things I want to mention. Uh, first of all, I want to remind anyone that is interested that uh, in early August, we will be taking a, a youth mission trip to Missouri. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, you're out there watching, feel free to reach out to me. I'll stick my email down in the, the comments when this video is over. But uh, yeah, should be a great time. We're headed to Missouri to uh, kind of help out a church and some of the um, elderly associated with that church. So um, yeah, just a great opportunity to serve and give back in Jesus' name. So, um, yeah, other than that, I'm excited to be here. Like I said, tonight we're going to continue uh, with John chapter 11. Um, so before we uh, dig in, let's uh, just start this evening with a quick, quick prayer. So, Dear Lord, we thank you for this time to look into your word. We pray that you would just help us to uh, to learn from it to, and to just uh, teach us from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so, in John 11, we're looking at really the, uh, the last miracle that's uh, kind of listed in John before he goes into... Um, well, Holy Week, the week leading up to his death. Um, so tonight we're looking at uh, the death and, not to spoil it, but uh, the resurrection of Lazarus. Um, so we're just going to uh, jump right in at Lazarus, or sorry, John chapter 11. So if you've got a Bible handy, I'd encourage you to open it up and follow along with us. Um, we'll uh, start right there at... Um, verse 1. Uh, it says, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Um, so here right away, it kind of makes a reference to Martha and Mary and who they are. Uh, and it talks about how Mary uh, is the one who poured perfume on Jesus' feet. And uh, in John's gospel, this actually hasn't happened yet. This will happen uh, in, the, <laughs> in the next chapter. But that's just to kind of give an understanding of who Mary and Martha and this Lazarus is. Um, and we see that Lazarus is sick and they have sent uh, a messenger or sent word to Jesus. Uh, and I think it's kind of interesting what they what they tell him. Uh, the word that they sent says, Lord, the one you love is sick. And I think it's kind of interesting. They don't ask for healing. They're not asking Jesus of anything. They're simply saying, you know, Lazarus is sick. Uh, and I think there are there are expectations that they have or of what will happen. Um, but they don't specifically ask for Jesus to come heal him. Uh, and I think this is something we can, we can see in our lives when we're, when we're praying, we, um, sometimes don't exactly know what to ask for. And, and as we'll see in this story in particular, God does not always answer like we expect. I would imagine with Martha and Mary, there was somewhat the expectation that all they had to do was let Jesus know that Lazarus was sick and he was going to come and and save Lazarus. Uh, and in a way, he does, but definitely not like they expected it to happen. So uh, let's continue verse 4. It says, When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. Um, so we see here, uh, well, what Jesus says in response, the sickness will not end in death. Now, markedly, it'll kind of take a path through death, but that won't be the end point. 
Uh, and we also see that Jesus says that it will be for God's glory. And this uh, idea is similar to what we saw a couple chapters ago when Jesus healed the blind man, that uh, it would be for God's glory. There is a purpose to Jesus' healing. Um, but it tells us that Jesus didn't go right away. He stayed there. Um, and this kind of had to make his disciples wonder what was going on. They probably heard this message too and wondered, you know, what's up? Why isn't he going? Um, and we soon find out. Um, so after two days, uh, it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, A short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? A man who walks by the day will not stumble, for he sees by the world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he had said this... Oh, well, we'll stop there. So, um... When Jesus says they're going to go back, the disciples' initial response is, well, didn't they try to kill you a little bit ago? Uh, you know, they were kind of worried for Jesus' safety. Um, and Jesus, needless to say, doesn't seem too concerned. Um, and so he, he continues talking to them, verse 11. It says, after he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, called Didymus, said to the rest of his disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Um, so a few things we see here. Uh, you know, Jesus tells them that Lazarus is falling asleep and, you know, kind of as we would expect and as we would understand, like, oh, he's sleeping. That's not bad. Hopefully he'll get better. Um, and Jesus then flat out tells them, no, actually, he's he's dead. And um, this probably confused them a little bit because Jesus has said he's fallen asleep, but I'm going to go wake him up. And then he says, well, actually, he's dead. And... Um, they, they follow him though. They are willing to go with him. You, you know, the last line we see here is, um, Thomas says, let us also go that we may die with him. Uh, so they understood that there was some danger, some risk in Jesus going back to Judea. This is where just a few chapters ago, people had tried to kill him for what they saw as blasphemy. But um, doesn't deter Jesus. Jesus knows what is coming in his life and, and he returns to Judea. Um, so continuing in 17, it says, On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. So Martha comes out to meet Jesus, and understandably, she's, I mean, a little upset. <laughs> she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You know, you can tell she's hurt and probably a little upset with Jesus. Um, but she still has hope. She says, but I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. She has hope that Jesus can still save her brother. She has seen Jesus work miracles. She's She knows what Jesus has done leading up to this. And there is still hope in her. So at this point, Jesus replies, uh, verse 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at that last day. So Jesus doesn't immediately respond with any type of, yeah, let's go bring him back to life. And at this, I think Martha is likely a little disappointed. She kind of reserves herself to the fact that she knows that Lazarus will come back, will be raised from the dead eventually. But in this moment, it seems like she's kind of given up hope that she's going to see them again in this life. But Jesus doesn't stop there. In verse 25, he continues, Jesus said to her, 
I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And here we see Jesus tell us more about himself. You know, earlier Martha had said um, that she knew that if he asked God, God would give him what he wanted. And Jesus says here, I don't need to ask God. I am the resurrection. I am the life. This is what I have come for. And he flat out asked Martha, do you believe this? And Martha says, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God, who has come into the world. So we see that that Martha does believe. And she may not know exactly what her belief means. But she knows that Jesus has come as the son of God. Um, and at this point, we see that Jesus goes to, uh, to uh, well, doesn't go to talk to Mary. He, um, he sends for Mary. So verse 28 says, And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at a place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her, Notice how quickly she got up and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So we see here that uh, when Mary comes up to Jesus, she says nearly the same thing that Martha had said. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Uh, but notably, she doesn't ask for anything like Martha did. Martha kind of came asking for his life back and Mary comes and simply falls down and just mourns. She recognizes what Jesus could have done, but does not ask any more of him at this moment. Verse 33, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And here we see the humanity of Jesus. We see that though he was God come to earth, to die for us. He was also a man with friends and, and hurt. And he knows what it's like to, to lose a loved one, to have to mourn a loved one, to walk beside those who have lost loved ones. His humanity shows through here. And here we also see that some kind of, I don't want to say speaking behind his back, but saying, couldn't he who have opened the blind man's eyes, kept this man from dying. And in here we see kind of the sentiment of prayers that have not been answered how we want. Um, I think we've all in our lives probably had a time when a prayer has been denied. And uh, and this is the sentiment that these people bring to it. Like, shouldn't, uh, couldn't he have healed him? Why didn't he, why didn't he heal him? Uh, but we see that this is, is not the end for Lazarus. The verse 38, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Jesus goes to the tomb and <laughs> tells him to take away the stone. And I mean, the reality is when people die, they start to stink. And that's what Martha says is, well, Jesus, it's going to kind of stink. And Jesus reminds her that he said that if he believed, if she believed, she would see the glory of God. 
Verse 41. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. All Jesus has to do is call his name and he comes back to life. Uh, er earlier in John, I'm going to read a verse from John chapter 5, verse 25. Uh, Jesus had said, I tell you the truth. A time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. We see here that dead ears are not a problem for Jesus. He simply calls him out and he comes back to life. And we see in this a, a reflection of ourselves. Um, obviously, if you're out there watching this, you are still alive and that's wonderful. But in all of us, we have a sin that kills us and a sin that, that makes us dead. And, you know, the, the illustration I've heard is, you know, dead men cannot save themselves. There is nothing you can do if you are dead. We are saved solely by Jesus. Um, and throughout the Gospels, we see um, three resurrections that Jesus did and I, I heard somewhere a while ago that um you know in the bible every funeral that jesus attended ended with a resurrection and so <laughs> it might be a good thing to have him at yours because just as he raised lazarus from the dead he he draws us out of our death in sin and brings us to life um now, there's a little bit left in this chapter, uh, and I'm just going to kind of give you a, an overview of it. We see that um, after this, it started to spread what Jesus had done, and it gets back to the Pharisees, and they're kind of upset to, to hear and to see what Jesus was doing. Um, and it tells us exactly what they want to do about this. Uh, this is I'm just going to read a passage. This is uh, jumping ahead to verse 49. It says, Then one of them, named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. Caiaphas here is speaking of killing Jesus to uh, basically protect Jews from the Romans. Well, there's no doubt that he does not realize how true that statement he just made was. I'm going to read it again. It is better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. And this is true in a way that he couldn't have realized. That Jesus, this one man, would die. Not just for the Jewish nation, but for everyone everywhere. And it was better for... Jesus to die so that we can live, so that we do not perish. And this is exactly what he was going to do. You know, starting next week, we get into Jesus entering into Jerusalem and everything leading up to his death. His death that he died for us so that we do not have to. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life that you have given us. Not just life on earth, but eternal life with you that we receive solely by your grace. We ask that we would look to you, that we would hear your voice and know that we, like Lazarus, can be, can be saved from our sin, can come back to life. Amen. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, look forward to seeing you next week. So have a good night, good weekend, a good fourth, everyone. Hope you uh, celebrate with some fireworks and, you know, delicious barbecue, whatever you may do. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Bye.